Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So now, welcome back uh, to our next lecture. So here, in this lecture, I do the some type of Venu reconstruction or interpolation. As we have seen that uh, the first order, so we have seen that the uh, First order opoint gives numerical diffusion. So the solution is very diffusive. We smooth out the solution. Second order central reference gives so either opoint or central reference gives oscillation. So, in order to order to improve higher better approximation with higher order we use idea of, of Venu this is called it is in the full form weighted essentially non oscillatory scheme so what how what does it mean for example the venu The Venu reconstruction is obtained by the convex combination of of three polynomial. If L of X, if X of C of X, and if R of X, yeah. So he is given by. So we want to approximate the F of X. So here we get F of X is equal to some omega l f l of x plus omega c f c of x plus omega r f r of x so where where f l x f c x and f r of x they are polynomial at x 
obtained from left neighbors central neighbors and right neighbors respectively and omega l omega c omega r r weights so these are the weights so we have to compute so now what does it mean that if i am we are having some x it has neighbors so on the right on the left and on the center so this is inside edge here we have neighbor both sides then we have the left neighbor we have right neighbors yeah so here from the left neighbor we get f l of x from the right neighbor we get f of r of x and from the central neighbors we get f of c x so now you have three polynomials polynomials obtained from the left neighboring points polynomial obtained from the right neighboring points then polynomial obtained from the whole neighboring point that is i'll the central then if we have three polynomial because you know that we need the upwinding so either we don't know whether it is positive or negative so in order to find just then we will automatically get that if it is the velocity coming from that one this left approximation the up, the, the backward the, the will give you the automatically larger weight and if it is coming from this part the right one will give the larger weight and then it will compass the central one gives the higher order and it will compensate yeah so this is the basic idea so we have to interpolate three polynomials on left right and center and then we have to just uh, compute the weight so it is weight r just as a function of derivative so now so how the weight how do we compute the weight let let uh, psi k of prime and uh, psi k of double prime k is equal to 1 k is equal to left c r r derivatives so first order derivative and second order derivative on the left on the right and in the center yeah these are two derivatives because we want to have the second order approximation therefore we have Taylor expansion of our order 2 then we have derivative of the first order this is this and this this are derivatives of f of x yeah so it's central left and right the weight omega k r defined as k is equal to left c and r yeah so i have just given the symbol so omega k is equal to is alpha k divided by alpha l plus alpha c plus alpha r where so alpha k is equal to again c of k by beta of k square plus epsilon whole square with the beta k is equal to psi k prime square 
delta x square plus psi k double prime square delta x to the power 4. And so, so now what? To, so we know the derivative. Once we know the derivative, we can find alpha k. So beta k is given from the derivative. So alpha k we have to find. So alpha to find the alpha k, we need epsilon and k, c k. So epsilon is maybe 10 to the power minus 6. So mostly there is no unique rule you can play. It is depends upon the user. And the c of k is equal to, I define that. So the c is c is the center. I define 0 0.5. And c of l, I define it is uh, 0 0.5 if a the velocity a is positive, 0 if a is negative, and c of r is I define is 0 if a positive, because if information coming from the, uh, this, uh, this part, it is 0. So it's 0 0.5 if a negative. Yeah, so I give larger uh, weight. So I give weight if it is coming from the right is 0.5. So it is summation of central and the left is one always. Summation of central and right is one always. So in the classical literature, people use like uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, so that the summation is one. But in my, uh, my mesh free method, I have used this type of uh, combination. So with this combination, I think uh, we get better resolution, better approximation. And now let us see the numerical simulation. So again, I have done uh, this part uh, in, again in a Fortran, not in a MATLAB. Uh, but you can reproduce your results because I have shown a lot of MATLAB uh, code. So it is similar to that one. So I have written the Fortran code also in the same simple way so that you can reproduce. So I'm not going to show you the code, but I show you the simulation and the numerical results. Okay, let us see the numerical results. So I am now with the same example with this uh, true and GN. I'll, I'll show with the second order what is the difference because in the first order we have seen that it was little bit smearing out. So so let me run the code. So it is, it was, I have run the, the linear one. Now it is linear similar grants. Uh, so Veno with a BDF2. So with this uh, example of SU, and now I am running the code. So in the end, I have compared the, the, the error. So L1 error is 0. Yeah, it's a very small. It is an L2 error is 0 0.01. If I run the single code, uh, let us see uh, with this upwinding, I will have a larger error. It is. So anyway, this uh, I will show you in the table later on. So I have the result, now I plot in the MATLAB simulation. So let us see that uh, the MATLAB simulation here. So MATLAB simulation, we see the result there. Let us make it larger. Now it's just run. So now you see that in the first order case, what you have seen, this was smearing. Yeah. Now we are getting, so the smearing is not, we are getting almost accurate result. 
so if uh, i just look uh, the the plot between the exact and numerical one so let me load the final data i have uh, saved i the row so this is the numerical data So here what we have, we can see that, so, so this is, uh, the, we obtained this, uh, the exact solution is that uh, this is a red one, yeah, the exact solution, the red one, the numerical solution is blue one. So we are very close uh, compared to, in the 1D case, what we have seen that our solution was very, very smearing. Then uh, if, now let me consider the end of the example, this, this example I have put the source is equal to zero. Now if I consider the next example, so let us see the next example. So the next example is I consider, so again the periodic boundary condition, I just consider the domain minus one to one, periodic boundary condition on the left and right. So what I have that, so I get the first order approximation is very smooth solution here, far away, but second order approximation gives exactly with the, the numerical solution is matching exactly with the, uh, the new exact solution. So even with the sharp, you know, the here, the, this is a first order B, BDF1 upwinding. This is very diffusive, but when we use the second order, when O approximation, and then we get the very close solution to exact and numerical solution. So if we look uh, the convergence study, because it is very hard to do the convergence study in the discontinuous case, because here it is a very sharp corner, therefore here you cannot find the nice convergence study. And then if you look to the smooth solution, after a certain time you switch out until they have a smooth solution, and then what you get, now we get the order of convergence more than two. It means that we have the convergence of order, time integration of order two, space discretization or the approximation of order two. So then we get in, in total the, uh, the convergence order two. The same case happened that when we do the Berger equation, so this, this is the BDF two here, and then if I take the SOC solution, so the same, so we have seen in the earlier uh, the, the session that, so with the upwinding scheme, now if we do the first order upwinding, this is a, the black one is the exact solution. If I do the first order upwinding, I get uh, this uh, a smearing solution. Now when I do the BDF, I am very close to the exact solution with this initial value problem. And now for the second one that if I consider, so again minus one to one is my domain and I very early time step before the shock develop and I just take uh, the solution until it was uh, because after certain time this is a nonlinear equation the discontinuity start the shock is start developing therefore before the shock comes until we have the the continuous solution and then there what we do that so I am just uh, I'm just computing the exact solution and numerical solution. And then here I'm looking again the order approximation. Even with the nonlinear case, we get the second order convergence. So let us see the, the evolution of Berger equation. Uh, so now I just run again the code. So 
So let me do first for the video of one. Burger MLS. So first is the upwinding. So the opening is finished. So I have this much error. 6.592 or minus 2 is the L2 error. And let us see the numerical simulation so for the burger. So this is my initial value. Then if time evolves, I get uh, the shock. And now if we look uh, the the exact numerical solution. So the red one is the exact solution and this blue is the numerical solution. Now we do the second order approximation. So run the second order burger with the Veno approximation. This is finished. And now let us run the code. So if I look the the numerical solution here, so now I am very close to the exact solution. And if we look the time evolution, here also we see that it is better, it is in the, in the shock, it is much sharper than with the first order upwind uh, solution. So the, then uh, I want to show the difference between the, the first order Is a linear approximation, the first order, this open method, once more. So if I do the first order upwind. So this is if I give the another initial value here. So this was how I have shown the conversion history of that one. So we get this first order. So this was the old value here. It was very short time. So it was for the shock. I am just plotting that. And now so I do linear expression. Veno periodic one. So this is a uh, the solution here. So if I run longer because of the, the negative source term, the solution becomes zero in the final time. So that is uh, so everything will be zero. So once more, I want to show the difference of this uh, and the one uh, that with the SU example. So this is the Veno. So we got, so it is just, it is a, this is the, the it is a constant along the characteristics, but the same if I have, so if I run this uh, with the, with the upwinding, Then I will have a smearing solution. Yeah, so now it is smearing out, it is coming down and small and small. So, so this is the effect of the first order approximation.
So I think we close the chapter of the Semilagrange uh, method. In the next, I will show you that if we apply, so because you may ask that why I didn't apply the higher order approximation for the, the Lagrangian case. So in the Lagrangian, what we had, we had the explicit uh, integration on the time, but we had the, the, the first order with the linear, with the, without diffusion, we have the first order approximation of upwind, which was very, uh, uh, this was very diffusive. And now if we increase the second order, of course, we have the oscillation, but we apply the same, the Veno idea to approximate the derivative, put on the right hand side, and then just check how accurate solution we get. And uh, so then, uh, then we'll close the chapter of uh, the conservation law. So, so I thank you and then wait for the next, uh, next lecture where I come back again to the Lagrangian method using the weighted essentially non-oscillatory the scheme just for computing a derivative, not for the interpolation scheme. Thank you.